Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Spandana Spurthy Financial Limited Q2 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shalab Saxena, MD and CEO of Spandana Sphuti Financial Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining the call and investing time in understanding the journey of Spandana Sphuti Financial Limited. Friends, it has been over 6 quarters that the current management has been handling the business under Spandana 2.0. over the past quarters we have collectively focused on the following priorities number 1 people which is reinforcing the middle and senior management team with professionals that was number 1 number 2 or the second priority was strengthening governance risk and control with added focus on refining the processes number 3 focus on customer acquisition led business growth number 4 technology scale up number 5 customer led initiatives with emphasis on product services and meeting their life cycle needs these were the priorities if i may just refresh which were the ones which we had set out when we had come out with the vision 2025 document on the 11th of july 2022 while the agenda is still work in progress suffice to add we have made significant progress on each of the items at this stage we can say with reasonable surety that the company is on course to becoming a process driven and stable enterprise with professionals manning their respective domains we are taking all the steps to ensure the company becomes future ready to capitalize the opportunity that exists in the environment before i go on to the results let me also articulate the broad changes we have made over the past to meet the company future ready the first is people practices and communication number 2 cultural changes number 3 process improvements number 4 a completely data driven approach through the organization and number 5 distribution initiatives they are in no particular order uh, each of them is as important as the other on the five topics that i just covered let me just elaborate we have rolled out employee benefits like mediclaim life insurance formalizing performance management system institutionalizing long service awards greater focus on training and development of our team members organizing town halls every quarter which is a two way communication with employees to communicate the progress of the company and vice versa taking feedback we believe that in a large distribution as us it is important that we over communicate with our teams so that the thought process and feedback both are well cascaded and received specific to distribution we have taken the following steps which are very important in our considered opinion for defining the future of the company the first one is customer acquisition led growth second is moving to weekly repayment model from the current monthly number 3 geographical concentration mitigation approach which is how we had come across and we had come out with a seven focus states uh, uh, mandate number 4 branch expansion on the branch expansion i would just want to detail during the course of this calendar year we have operationalized 292 branches already there are 110 branches which are ready to be operationalized over the next 3 months thus taking our tally to over 1500 branches this completes our plan of having 1500 branches by fy25 as articulated in the vision 
So while our Vision 25 document had a plan of 1,500 branches, end of FY25, but looking at the way we were progressing, we thought that it is important that with the momentum, we open the branches as well so that we have a clear 12 months for all the 1,500 branches so to kind of deliver over the next F, uh, next year, which is FY25. So while we are ahead of our plan, which obviously impacts cost in the shorter run, however, in the long run, we will have a significant upside to our distribution and profitability plans. We will now have the full 12 months of next financial year to deliver growth from the branches. Point number five, focus on JLG. Joint liability group is something that we as a team believe in and we are passionate about it. So the philosophy of five center meetings, which is Monday to Friday, with five groups in a center and five members in a group is something that we are progressing on. Another focus area is timely conduct of center meetings and focus on attendance. Number three is focus on operational efficiency, like distances traveled by a loan officer, geotagging of customer homes, etc. While I have listed the focus areas, I have to admit that we are not there yet. We will take about three, four quarters to reach the desired levels. But as they say, you know, this continuous work in progress for a... If I were to kind of give you a gist, our belief and philosophy remains. Number one, acquire more, which is the customer acquisition bit. Number two, lend shorter tenures, which is 12 months and 18 months is what we've introduced and accordingly we see a significant movement in those portfolios. Number three is muted ticket sizes. Personally, as a management, we feel that it's always good to be short on ticket sizes, not really aggressive on ticket sizes, and which is what we are progressing on. And number four, weekly repayment. We will continue to pursue, pursue this path. If you remember, we had said that all the new branches that we are going to open will be weekly branches, and we have a plan from now until exit 25 of converting the current monthly branches into weekly. We can safely say that end of FY25, about 80% Spandana should be weekly. Coming to collection model or project parivartan, you know, and here I would want to spend some time. Project parivartan, so just to give you a background, in our company, the first 10 days of the month, first 10 days, calendar days of the month were reserved for collections, and the balance 20 days was for disbursement, customer acquisition, etc. This has this was the model of the company, which you know we've tried to rework under the project parivartan, and I'll just get into the details to ensure. So fundamentally, we believe that under microfinance, we should be doing all the three day all the three things, which is acquire customers, disburse customers, and collect from the customers, all the three things at the same time. So, so while we had a model, we thought that this was the time, which was quarter two, because we couldn't have done it around quarter three or quarter four. So quarter two was the time when we said we will uh, modify the distribution model. This was to ensure that the distribution model remained scalable, and we continue to do all the three things, as I said you know, on all the days. So we changed the model in quarter two in 700 branches, which covered about 1.5 million customers. So what did we change? First of all, we moved the customer's repayments from the dates, that is first to 10th, from the date to weekdays, which is Monday to Friday of the month, with Saturday and Sunday being a no customer operations day. This led to a change in repayment days for most of, for almost all the customers which were there in these 700 branches, which was the 15 lakh customers that I just spoke about. The reason why we did it was, while I said, you know, we had to do all the three things, acquire customers, disburse to the customers, and collect from the customers on all the days. This also gives our employees two Saturdays to do training administrative work. 
So we spend significant time in communicating the changes to the customers. Obviously, with a base of about 1.5 million and initiators of this mega scale, there are bound to be disruptions. There were many instances when our team members reached to conduct center meetings, but the customers probably missed coming because their schedule was slightly different from what we would have articulated. On the contrary, there were many instances where our team members, because of the change, reached at a different time of the meetings, thus missing the customer who came and went away. The above also has led, apart from the bit of a disruption in the field, it has also led to an increase in the flows in the buckets as you would have noticed in the presentation. However, we are very confident that this is temporary and in the next three to four months, we will stabilize and even out the variances. Not really ideal, however, we did anticipate this. We had to bite this bullet, had to go through the temporary inconvenience and disruption for a better tomorrow. And we walked the path. We are seeing normalization and by next quarter, we should have regularized this. Now to go to the highlights of the quarter. New customer acquisition. The results were already uploaded on the BFC and NFC, but however, I will just quickly go through the, uh, through the results. New customer addition during the quarter was 3.5 lakhs, a YOI growth of about 183%. So the last quarter, same year it was, last year, same quarter it was 1.2 lakhs. So from 1.2 lakhs, it has moved to 3.5 lakhs. A quarter on quarter, last quarter we were at 2.6 lakhs, so there's a quarter on quarter growth of 34%. So YOI growth 183%, quarter on quarter growth of 34%. We have acquired 6.1 lakh customers in the first half of the year, well on course to cross 3 million customer base by end of the year. We are currently at 2.7 million customers, a growth of 24% YOI, and a 12% growth over the previous quarter. The AUM end of the quarter is 9,784 crores, a 69% growth YOY, and 11% growth quarter on quarter. Geographical concentration risk in MFI is the biggest risk. Beginning of last year, when we presented the Vision 25 paper, we had identified seven focus states where we would grow our business to mitigate this. Those states now contribute 22% to the AUM. By end of the year, we should be 26%, and end of next year, this will be in the range of 41 to 44%. End of next year, our endeavor is to ensure no state is more than 12% of the total AUM. Now, this is a big step that we are taking. Currently, our biggest states are in the range of about 15%, 15, 15.2, 15.3. However, you know, we have another six quarters to really moderate these and get the big ones down to 12%. So we are comfortable with a single state contribution of about 12% or below. On the disbursement, disbursement for the quarter was 2,513 crores. This was a YOI growth of 81% and a quarter on quarter growth of 51%. Last quarter we disbursed, last as in quarter one, we disbursed 1,664 crores. On the asset quality, the current book is at 96.7%. This has seen a bit of a dip because of the project Parivartan that I mentioned. The GNPA, however, has gone down. It has fallen 23 bips to a 1.4%. And uh, this is quarter on quarter. If I look at a YOI, it was 7.37% as on 30th September of last year. NNPA again has seen a reduction of 7 bips over previous quarters, so we are at 0.42%. So without confusing on too many numbers, the GNPA at the current quarter is 1.4% and NNPA is 0.42%. We continue to maintain a PCR of 70.26%. Our CRAR is at a healthy 36.6%, indicating a good balance sheet position. Collection efficiency, I've already mentioned, uh, net collection efficiency was 97.7% versus 98.1%. So that's where a minus 0.4% for the reasons that I mentioned, Project Parivartan. The gross collection efficiency, however, which is collection with a lag, is at 100.3%. On the borrowings bit, it was a good quarter for us. We, we mobilized 3,191 crores. 
in quarter versus 1080 crores last year same quarter so growth of about 195% happy to inform all that we have added three big lenders in the quarter state bank of india nabard and sidbi uh, you would have seen the presentation our cash position also was very healthy end of quarter we were sitting on a cash the balance sheet had a cash of 1850 crores coming to financial performance the total income was 640 crores which was a growth of 106% yoy and 21% quarter on quarter net income was 412 crores a growth of 89% the yield has gone up quarter on quarter and while the same quarter last year was 19.5% but even on a quarter on quarter you know it has gone up by about 0.45% so it was about 24% last quarter we 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 are at 24.5% this quarter the nims of the portfolio is 14.1% an improvement of 113 bits over previous year however down 0.11% over previous quarter this has been because of increase in the leverage which has gone up from 1.98x in previous quarter to 2.31 in quarter 2 so we will see some compression as we continue to increase our leverage uh, we have made this position earlier that uh, a south of 4 a south of 4x is something that uh, we would be comfortable in so anywhere 3.5 to 4 and once we hit that we start looking for growth capital so as of now that distance is some some bit away on the ppop we reported a 258 crores a yoy growth of 134% and a 36 36% increase over quarter 1 consequently our profit after tax this quarter has been 125 crores which is a growth of 127% yoy and a 5% growth quarter on quarter during the quarter we also received a rating upgrade from ikra our credit rating was upgraded to a stable from a minus uh, po uh, positive earlier so now the three rating agencies all of them are at par to summarize we will end the year at about 12000 crores of aum we are we ended the last quarter at 9782 so we will end the year at 12000 crores of aum which is exactly what we've been saying over the past few quarters this will entail disbursing about 3000 crores and 3500 crores in q3 and q4 which we are confident of meeting all distribution led initiatives will be completed by end of q3 beginning of quarter 4 these are predominantly opening of new branches and entailing the cost of opening those branches and manpower because it takes about 60 days to operationalize a branch uh, we did this so that uh, you know we could prepare for a clean 12 months of growth next year so the next few months will all be about stabilizing next year which is fy25 will be all about focusing on growth and most importantly focusing on efficiencies and productivity uh we have mentioned the vision 25 uh, and the reference to vision 25 which was essentially a three year plan which we had come out on the 11th of july 2022 giving details of where do we want to take the company over the next three years which is until fy 25 happy to inform all of you that we started working on the vision 20 2028 plan this is the plan we are because when we came out with the vision 25 it was a 3 years plan we are already midway <coughs> we have initiated the planning exercise for the subsequent 3 years we should be able to share the plan by end of the year suffice to add we are usually optimistic of what the future holds for spandana and the same should find its way in the plan i thank all the stakeholders of spandana the board our our lenders and our colleagues in spandana who pooled in their energies during the year a special note of thanks to all the branch staff our loan officers branch managers and the entire field staff who are slogging hard to deliver the results thank you to all of you who are on the call 
you've been a constant source of encouragement by giving us positive advice, feedback, and of course, support during the year. We look forward to receiving similar encouragement in the future. We have the entire management team with us and are ready to take questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sripal Doshi from Equirus. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good evening, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Congratulations to you and the entire team for the good quarter. So my first question was pertaining to the pertaining to the customer edition. So we had guided for almost one million customer edition during this year, and we've already added uh, you know 0.61 million customers. So and second half being a stronger half. Uh, do you believe we'll be able to surpass that guidance and do much better uh, customer acquisition, which will lead to further better loan growth? Yeah, so, Shripal, hi. Uh, yeah, so, you uh, you are, uh, you know, you are, uh, we've done about 6.1 lakhs in the first two quarters. So, theoretically, what you're saying is right. But, however, uh, what you to also keep in context is the 3,000 and the 3,500 crores that we will do. Within that, yeah, the one could become 1.1, maybe could stretch to a one point, uh, you know, uh, could be about 11 and a half lakhs as well. Beyond that, so there's a certain mix that we have in mind, which we are kind of executed. Plus, uh, we have a lot of unfinished work uh, on the distribution side that we had. So, yes, there is opportunity in the market. And what we've also observed is that uh, post the release of the pent-up demand about six, eight quarters back, now the demand is pretty stable. So we will measure and calibrate our steps, Shripal. Uh, our focus on customer acquisition will re will remain. 1.1 uh, is a million against a 1 million guidance is a possibly a doable thing. Uh, but broadly speaking, we will remain within a 12,000 crore kind of a number and, uh, you know, utilize the time to kind of uh, do other distribution initiatives that we have on our uh, agenda. Got it. So second question was pertaining to the, to, to the credit cost. So during this quarter, we have seen that uh, increase to almost 3.9% on an annualized basis. Uh, so could you please throw some light on that? And will this run rate uh, lead to any change in our guidance of 2% for the year? Hi, Shripal. This is Ashish Desai. So if you look at the credit cost, we have given the breaker. Uh, what is uh, coming from the BAU is about 1.2%. Uh, we do have some legacy stated uh, provisioning that we have done, uh, which is another 2.6%. Um, in, in, in my mind, the, uh, the, uh, the other items, the ARC and, uh, uh, you know, some uh, correction that we had to do on the, on the assignment portfolio that we have uh, is, is largely addressed. Uh, we may have uh, we may have some more uh, flows, but that will be calibrated in the period of time. Uh, what is important is to look at what is coming from the BAU or the book that we have created uh, in the recent past, or the book which is uh, going to continue in the in the balance sheet, and that is uh, stacking at about 1.4 percent right now. Uh, and I think this can be improved from here on. And any, so like as you highlighted that the collection efficiency, as Sir or highlighted that the collection efficiency was affected because of the, you know, project per, uh, Perivartan, right? So can that also lead to an increase in uh, credit cost requirement for the year or an increase in flows from here on? So, so whatever is currently built in does have some bit of impact because of Perivartan as well. So it's hmm. already taken into account. Uh, going forward, we believe that things will improve from here on. It is the initial hiccup which has added to the flows and that, has, that is reflecting, reflecting in primarily 1 to 30 and, you know, 30 to 60 bucket. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, further flows into uh, 90 plus, uh, whatever the natural uh, flow will be there, that would definitely happen. But uh, 
uh, you know the 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 ones which are primarily because of administrative issues should you know correct uh, in the coming coming few months so shripal let me also add uh, will there be a impact there is already an impact will it flow yes little bit will flow for sure there is no doubt about it and uh, however will it kind of significantly impact the guidance no chance you know we had said that you know it will be sub of 2% we are well below that uh, they, this is a pain of one quarter which we had to take because the model in our wisdom had to be made scalable which we kind of walked that path once we are there now it is a we kind of uh, set right about uh, 15 lakh uh, customers and about 730 branches rest obviously you know the 300 branches we are functioning as is and this year we have no plan to do uh, anything on those 300 branches the new branches are either way weekly so you know so that part uh, is sorted already so we are we are uh, you know all these initiatives in our wisdom have to be taken if you really want to take the it takes pandana to a 17000 crores and uh, a stable and a robust mon- uh, model is what uh, we've kind of uh, planned for and this is a step in that direction yes we will have an impact probably in this quarter also but then you know by that's all this is all temporary because these are customers who are with us it is just that you know that entire disruption in terms of our schedule and their schedule has kind of not really aligned well and uh, with a fifth, with a 1.5 million uh, base you know you these things are anticipated uh, so hence we chose uh, uh, july and uh, august month to kind of uh, execute this so that we can cover up by the month of march of this year got it sir got it thank you so much for the detail answer so one last question was pertaining to the uh, collection efficiency again sir have we seen any impact uh, in collection efficiency in bihar uh, up uh, you know sort of states wherein uh, wherein there was derailment in collection efficiency because of rainfall or monsoon so uh, we did a analysis our uh, chief risk officer uh, you know he did a detailed analysis uh, on both the drought which is a short rainfall and uh, uh, you know uh, wherever there was excess rainfall uh, what the impact of both which is deficient as well as uh, you know wherever there was higher you know was about uh, was about uh, the total portfolio impact was about 2 and 1/2 or 3% of our entire book so per se uh we uh, and this exercise we did just about i think about 4 weeks or 3 weeks back you know when this thing was very uh, ripe so immediately we uh, bihar either way we don't have a uh, book uh, we have a book which is uh, reasonably manageable we are uh, we are uh, uh, you know we are uh, doing a very very calibrated approach in uh, each of the in each of these growth states and we are fine you know we've not seen any drop or any stress is that is the question got it sir got it so the, the the collection efficiency would broadly be like what i mean 94 95% for those for for that 2 2.5% portfolio or would it be even lower than that so uh, specific question to bihar the collection efficiency actually is better than the national average okay, okay. Uh, the country level got it got it sir so uh, thank you so much for answer uh, श्रीपाल हमें है ना कोई कोई जगह पे मतलब बिकॉज दिस इज अ वेरी स्टैंडर्ड क्वेश्चन विच गेट्स आस्ट वी हैव नॉट एक्सपीरियंस्ड एनी स्ट्रेस स्पेसिफिक स्ट्रेस इन एनी ऑफ द स्टेट्स दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेर एवर देर आर इश्यूज दे आर मोर इंटरनल देन अ मार्केट और एनवायरमेंट सो हेंस यू नो दैट इज अ मैटर ऑफ फोलेज फॉर अस एंड एवरीबडी इन द इंडस्ट्री बट येस ऑफ कोर्स यू नो वी टू बी वेरी केयरफुल वेन वी लैंड एंड वी हैव टू बी एज अट लैंड शॉर्ट लैंड न्यूटेड Got it, sir. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Good luck for the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranish Bua from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, just two questions from my side. Uh, one on the uh, customer acquisition side. You know, so in this quarter, the new customer addition is actually at par with the uh, industry leader. In fact, is higher than that. So, just wanted to understand, uh, you know, what percentage of this customer are, uh, let's say, unique to us, and uh, maybe if you can just further share, uh, you know, whether we'll be what a second, third lender, or we'll be, uh, let's say, first or second lender. Uh, so, uh, Ranish, uh, good evening. Uh, I will give you the stats. Uh, customers, and it is not just specific to three and a half. I'm just giving you a flavor, you know. So it will be yes. slightly more uh, because it becomes a more, uh, you know, uh, uh, slightly, uh, you know, wider answer. Uh, 
थर्टी थ्री टू थर्टी फोर परसेंट ऑफ आर कस्टमर बेस इट वॉज अबाउट थर्टी सिक्स परसेंट लास्ट क्वार्टर वी आर थर्टी फोर परसेंट इज अ सिंगल लेंडर रिलेशनशिप विद स्पंदना अदर थर्टी थ्री परसेंट इज वन प्लस वन विच इज अपार्ट फ्रॉम स्पंदना देर इज वन मोर then uh, uh, there is a uh, you know so this takes it to about 69 68 69 we have about 19% with a 1 plus 2 hmm. and then the others are you know once they take a loan from us then they go and uh, you know kind of borrow from somewhere else but what we have also been observing uh, renish is uh, doing a lot of analytics in terms of is there a co relation of either a ticket size or a number of lenders to the uh, you know to the repayment behavior of the customers uh, until now we've not we've not really uh, you know seen any that's number one number two our focus will be on uh, moving into geographies where we increase the single lender relationship because single lender relationship also uh, is a factor of our existing customer base and how much they want so given the fact that we have normalized our operations you will see a lot of these things the 33 34% touching the 38 39 percent uh, if you go back to uh, if you go back to my quarter one earnings call uh, we had said that our desire is that single lender and a 1 plus 1 should be a 38 39 38 39 equivalent you know so about 78 79 should be 1 or 1 plus 1 so mm-hmm. that is the distance that we have to travel and we are walking that path that will obviously uh, in our wisdom uh, weekly kind of helps us uh, weekly repayment helps us in that plus uh, now out in the market from a customer point of view spandana is acknowledged as a stable lender uh, which when they need there is a credit demand and this is a credit uh, they need a uh, a uh, periodic dose of capital uh, for their uh, running their regular businesses once they have that confidence you will see this number increasing you know so that's how we are going to you know we are approaching the business got it got it sir and just to follow up on that so uh, let's say the customer pool you know wherein uh, you know the lender relationship is 1 plus 2 and above uh, what could be the industry level outstanding for borrower oh oh so we will have to we'll get back to you we don't have it off hand okay. uh, but okay. but uh, 2000 into 2 par hamara hai na renish ji at a point in time hamari philosophy kya hai hamari philosophy hai hum kabhi 2 lakh ka loan nahi matlab 2 lakh wala wala bhi ka i mean it doesn't really ring a bell with us so we will continue to acquire more and more customer which is the earlier question shripal asked you know so we will continue to focus on that and hence you know our experience is on a customer ticket size you know we are very well entrenched and we are very well in our capacity to ensure that we are able to hold on to our customer which is our customer as well i mean as in right now we have about 2.7 million so you know so that is what it is what is very critical is that we the share of wallet increases into the extent possible if required you know uh, if we have to so we are even now after you know even if a customer has a vintage of 7 years or 8 years we are still stuck at a, our maximum ticket size 80000 not more so we are continuing right. to follow that philosophy and i think we'll progress so. i just add uh, uh, hi renish you know we are exposure at a customer level is 36800 there abouts uh, if you mm-hmm. look at the uh, industry average should be hovering around you know 40 to 43000 43, so if you ha uh, if you add my borrower my loan plus another loan we are talking about you know 80000 uh, or some some somewhere there uh, if unless and un, uh, you know somebody has given loans which are like 3 years and all uh, then this number can increase but otherwise uh, this should be hovering around so given that we don't do three year loans we have all two year at best uh, i think uh, our kind of customer should be in that range of 70 to 80000 maximum exposure in that 1 plus 1 that you talked about so you asked a very important question ganesh uh, and i'm just adding a nuance to it you know what we track is not the ticket size what we track is the indebtedness level our indebtedness exactly. level today uh, is today is about 36000 and uh, this i can Uh, i can say with reasonable surety will keep on uh, you know either will remain static at this number or will keep going down 
which is exactly the opposite of what the industry uh, how the industry is moving but we are very comfortable with this position our our philosophy remains that you know the customer and this is what we believe in you will never lose a customer either on interest rate or ticket size you will lose a customer on your conduct on your the way you kind of approach the customer the way you deal with them if you are transparent if you are honest if you are uh, uh, if you are uh, you know if you maintain a cordial relationship with them and ensure that the credit supply is taken care of their credit demand is taken right. care of you know you are you are there got it got it got it uh, so just again uh, so sorry to follow up on that so uh, let me put it this way what is our credit uh, filters you know wherein uh, if the system level indebtedness of the customer goes let's say about 1 lakh or above 80000 will not land i mean does we have that kind of credit filters in our process or no so oh, it works the reverse uh, given the foyer and the 1 and a half lakhs you know that is a automatic ceiling uh, my rejection at this point in time is 45% and we have uh, the, the 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 only way to reduce that re rejection is to increase the tenor from 24 to 36 or 48 which uh, which either way we don't have so as a policy, we are rejecting a higher number for the reasons that I said because we think this is the right way to do. You know? So, so uh, I'll just bring on that. The way you can disburse a loan is maximum tenor can be up to two years and within that foyer uh, uh, eligibility. So your uh, either your amount will go down or the loan will be rejected altogether. That's how it works. Got it. Got it. And just, just last question from my side on the uh, credit cost. Uh, so, Ashish, you uh, did mention that, uh, you know, uh, this 58 crore in this quarter is uh, related to, you know, the passbook. Uh, but, uh, uh, let's say, in next two quarters, uh, what kind of impairment we still expect from the passbook? I mean, or this is uh, the last uh, leg and we are completely, uh, you know, uh, done with the uh, past impairment. So there are two pieces to this, Ranish. One is uh, ARC, book that we have on the balance sheet. The total outstanding on the balance sheet is about 164 crores. We carry a, a provision of 34 crores, which uh, emanates from the, you know, the ratings that are given by the, the trustee and the rating agency. Uh, so the, the provision is driven by that. We are confident that we will be able to collect uh, most of the ARC pool. So further provisioning, uh, may may not be required in my mind, uh, but if it happens, it should happen gradually over a period of time. That is part one. Uh, the other part is more about the assignment transaction, and it's a calibration that we've been doing around this. What we have on the balance sheet presently uncovered, or let's say what we have already uh, paid as advance to the banks and needs to be addressed in the balance sheet is about 16.6, 17 crores roughly, let's say. Having said that, okay. uh, we are in a business where we need to, you know, keep uh, uh, taking uh, the interest from the from the bank's perspective as well, and keep uh, having a resolve around this. So one can expect another, let's say, I'm just guesstimating, uh, a 40 to 50 crore kind of a number uh, over a period of time, not necessarily immediate or whatever, but I'm just doing a, a you know future gazing here uh, in yeah. in a way uh, that's the that's the number i have in mind uh, and we will be comfortable with that uh, if at all uh, that happens got it but sir uh, again i mean uh, if we have only 17 18 crore uh, you know which is uh, there on the balance sheet uh, then why we are saying 40 50 crore no no this is uh, Renish, this is future this could happen is what ashish is saying while our efforts on the field continues we are just defining the scope and the limit to what the discussion that we are having at this point in time you know, so it is it is not that this will happen next quarter or uh, the sub uh, the next three quarters or four quarters we are saying that is the total quantum of issue to be addressed while our efforts yeah. on the field continue so, you know that is the max that we are talking about that is the point ashish was mentioning got it got it Okay, uh, that's it from my side, sir, and best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sagar Shah from Piper Serica. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. 
and uh, first of all congratulations for such a healthy set of numbers uh, i just had one question actually uh, basically uh, uh, that was uh, related to uh, on the on your slide number 8 actually uh so my uh, query was that uh, uh, when i'm seeing your from 1 to 30 day bucket and from 31 to 60 day bucket i am seeing uh, a little bit deterioration in your asset quality uh, the 1 to 30 day bucket is going uh, has gone up for the first time from 0.55 to 0.85 and 31 to 60 has gone from 0.42 to 0.60 and it has increased for the first time in the last 6 uh, or quarters actually so uh my query was that i have are have we uh, see have we have we uh, actually started seeing some stress which we ha haven't uh, seen actually for the last uh, several quarters quarters in this micro finance space and if yes then uh, uh, can you uh, give some color on that please hi good evening uh, sagar uh, thanks for the question uh, i think this is partly covered in the opening remarks made by shalat Um, yeah sorry sir already caught i joined late sir not, not an issue not an issue uh, i'll i'll try to explain this in a uh, little more detail uh, the moment that you see in the uh, sma buckets has primarily uh, can be attributed to you know the parivartan project that the company has taken up we have mm -hmm. uh, we have moved almost about 700 branches in last quarter uh, from Uh, a monthly kind of an exercise where we used to collect between first and tenth of the month to uh, a weekly kind of a setup where we are asking customers to you know make the payments in the first week of the particular month which is monday to friday so in this uh, there is a, a administrative issue where the customers are still not aligned to the new thought process and that is what is creating a little bit of uh, you know slip overs or so if you see our overall collection on the gross basis is still 100.3% which means people are paying with some lag and there are some miss outs that have happened which will catch up as we progress and uh, i think what we believe is in another 3 to 4 months we should see this again normalizing and going back to the levels where we were in the past so sagar uh, quickly you know while we covered i covered this at a very very length uh, you know at a length uh, in my opening remarks but broadly our company used to follow a collection cycle of 1st to 10th which was a date and the balance 20 days was for uh, disbursement and member acquisition what we have done is we thought it was not really uh, the right thing to do was to do all the three things which is collect disburse and acquire new customer every single day of the 2021 days that you work so we moved in 700 branches covering 1.5 million customers from the date to a day which is instead of 1st to 10th now we are saying monday to friday you know okay. so we came out with a schedule to the customer saying you know ab aapko ab 8 tarikh ka installment nahi hai aapko budhwar ko aana hai ya gurudwar ko aana hai ya shukrawar ko aana hai ab wo 15 lakh customer ko pahunchate pahunchate you know uh, for uh, you know for a scale of this you know obviously there was to be a disruption that is why we chose this quarter we were fully uh, aware of the risk but then you know as i used the line in my you have 61 second Okay, okay, sure, sir. And my so, last question, sir, was related to credit cost. As you already uh, highlighted, uh, there was a one-off in the quarter related to restructuring. So that's why our credit cost uh, was little higher, ninety crores. So can you uh, give a guidance of our credit cost for FI twenty four and for FI twenty five also? You have thirty one seconds. देखिए आप वो अगर हमारी वो स्लाइड देखेंगे उसमें हमारा क्रेडिट कॉस्ट 1.4 परसेंट ही है जो वो बैलेंस है वो है ऑन द दैट इज टूवर्ड्स दी एस आर एंड दी यू नो सम असाइनमेंट ट्रांजेक्शन दैट वी हैव डन सो यू नो आई डोंट वांट टू रियली टेक ऑफ द टाइम ऑफ द अदर्स बट यू कैन सेपरेटली यू नो आस यू नो यू कैन सेपरेटली रीच आउट टू आस एंड देन काइंड ऑफ ओके श्योर सर श्योर थैंक यू थैंक यू The next question is from Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, and congratulations. Rajiv, we seem to have lost the line for the management. Uh, please stay on the line while we reconnect the line for the management. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah.
have the line for the management reconnected. Uh, we have a question from the line of Mr. Rajiv Mehta. Please go ahead, Rajiv. Yeah, hi, Shalab and Ashish. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask questions and congrats on demonstrating significant scale of the franchise. Uh, so first question is on the portfolio yield. So portfolio yield has improved from 24% to 24.5%, uh, but the interest income has grown exactly in line with loan portfolio. That is by 10, 11%. So does it imply that uh, a good part of the growth that we saw in the quarter was slightly back-ended and a true reflection of the higher yield will come in, in Q3? Uh, uh, hi, Rajiv. Good evening. So I think the... The, the entire growth is in line with the uh, in line with the portfolio growth, and the reflection of the yield is nothing but you know whatever the top line growth has been. Uh, what, however, happens is we have done a, a DA two DA transactions, which will move some of the income for the related to the quarter as well into the you know the other line item uh, apart from the preponing of the income because of the DA transaction, which is almost almost of about 42 crores, uh, which has gone into the uh, other income uh, line item. Uh, that 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 has that gives you some approbation in terms of you know the portfolio yield. As far as portfolio yield is concerned, I think we are uh, very much there. Maybe another 10 to 20 bits is what you can see. Uh, so, maximum uh, so the history is uh, Rajiv. Uh, we increased uh, post the uh, March regulations. We increased the interest rate. The first time around in June of 22, uh, and then uh, so we had taken up our IRR from 21.97 to 24 percent in October, which is 12th of October 2022, uh, which was last year. We took it up to 25. So for the past five quarter, four quarters, uh, we've been stable at the same interest rate. So the yield on account of the delta on interest rate has, I think, you know, kind of come one full year. Uh, you know, on a portfolio point of view. So now what you will see is not the delta on account of the increase in the rate, but more on account of the denominator increasing, you know, which will which will kind of progress as we move. And and just to cover the uh, question in two numbers, 7% was the uh, increase in the average uh, AUM. The increase in the uh, top line has been, interest income has been around 10%. So those are the numbers for you, Raji. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, Shalom also said that uh, customer level indebtedness will remain static or maybe will maybe even slightly come down. So when you speak about indebtedness, you're talking about our average outstanding customer, borrower? Correct, correct. So, so then does it not imply that customer retention or portfolio vintage will not improve? Because, I mean, naturally, as your processes, your... Uh, things, uh, uh, you know, are, are becoming much and much better. Uh, the customer stickiness, the customer retention should improve and the migration into subsequent cycles will lift uh, the overall blended outstanding per borrower. While I agree that you will also add new clients, uh, but uh, uh, can it not improve? I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. so uh, what you're saying is right. However, for the next one year, uh, so there are two parts we are discussing. We are discussing numbers, we are discussing philosophy. From a philosophy point of view, we will always be on the lower end of the ticket sizes. We will not go, for, you know, we will not go, and uh, which is what uh, in the early part of the conversation I said that our maximum ticket size we are operating at is 80,000, which is substantially lower than the industry. Uh, what you are saying is right. However, for the next one year, when we continue to pursue our customer acquisition-led growth, that is going to, by design, is, uh, you know, uh, offers our, we offer our customer a first cycle loan at 35,000. Uh, you know, uh, so, you know, you will see that number being stabilized at a 36,000 or thereabouts. Uh, one year hence, when currently our proportion of new versus uh, vintage customer is about 50-50, the day we start coming down to a 30% new and a 70% uh, 70 existing, that is when the 36 will move, start inching up. But, uh, and that will eventually play out, say, about six quarters from now. But, however, the 36 is unlikely to become a 46 or a 48. You know, at best, the 36 will be a 37, 38, 39. You know, that's the range that we are comfortable in. A sub-40,000 indebtedness, even for an existing customer base, is a number that we should be comfortable with. Mm. So, uh, 
So, so what is your thoughts about uh, you know Elion per phone office area or office to assets ratio in maybe in the medium to longer term? Where can we reach from where we are? So we are uh, currently uh, you know if uh, so we've done this uh, benchmarking. Uh, we are uh, at the uh, you know at a company at an enterprise level. We we are currently at a three three forty seven three. Uh, we are at a uh, count. Let me get an account. Count number of borrower cut borrower. Three three one seven. No, no, three one eight. Three one eight. Yeah. So uh, so uh, uh, we are uh, at a AUM for a low at currently is. Uh, 1.2 uh, excluding training and uh, we are handling our custom our uh, loan officers are handling 317 borrowers uh, per loan officer however 317 uh, rajiv is a number that uh, uh, and this 317 is because we've added a lot of uh, branches and uh, loan officers etc this will immediately in the short term hit uh, in the neighborhood of about 380 to 400 Uh, 400 uh, borrowers per uh, per custom uh, per loan officer, which next year we are targeting a 440 to 450 number. On the AUM side, you know we are currently at a 1.2. We are targeting a 1.4 to 1.5 over the next three to four quarters. That's the number we are targeting. On the AUM side, a 1.4 to 1.5 is a number that I foresee stabilizing. and on the uh, on the uh, borrower to loan uh, count uh, borrower to a loan officer i think a number anywhere between 450 to 480 is a number that we will be comfortable with uh, our we have in our best of times done a 600 also in our previous company but those days are uh, were different you know so mm. now anywhere 450 to 470 is a good enough number with a 1.5 uh, crore of corresponding portfolio Sorry for the long answer. No, no, thanks, thanks for this. Just a couple of observations, and then I would like to hear your comments. And this is my last question. Uh, we have seen some addition even in the monthly collection model branches. There has been slight addition. Uh, that is one observation. And second is uh, the growth in loan officers sequentially has been just four uh, percent, while we have added significant number of branches. So is this because of yield lag? Sorry, sorry. What was the? I understood the first question. What was the second question? Second question is about uh, the growth in loan officers on sequential basis has just been four percent. So I'm asking this con uh, this question in the context of significant number of branches that we've added. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, understood. So the monthly addition is because of the split branches because the branches sometimes you know outgrow their uh, you know their capability. Uh, when a branch starts okay. taking a twenty crore kind of a portfolio, you have no option but to administratively split. Otherwise, it becomes a slightly riskier branch, you know, from cash handling, etc., etc. Perspective. So, uh, all of this, either way, will uh, either way will uh, you know follow the uh, our model of uh, you know uh, transforming from a monthly to a weekly. Uh, on the on the loan officer count, uh, I think uh, Rajiv, we've kind of reached where we wanted to. Maybe another 500, 700, and we are done for. you know in terms of recruitment we are our branch addition and recruitment are uh, you know we kind of uh, you know done whatever we had to which was my point in the commentary when i said that uh, you know we've done all the we've taken the cost we've done all the investments in the distribution now it is all about uh, all about uh, efficiencies and productivity got it thank you so much and uh, best of luck thanks rajiv Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Tibrewal from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. And congrats, uh, Shalad and Asish, on a good quarter. So, just just two questions. Uh, the first one is is it's more of a data keeping question. Uh, Asish, if you could just tell us uh, what's the DA outstanding now as on September? Seven forty nine. Seven thirty two crores. Right. Thank you. And the other thing is, I mean, this time around, you already shared, I think, around 42 crores coming uh, from the DA transaction, which you show as net gain on fair value change. So, is this understanding right that I mean, all the fronting or what we call as assignment income when you undertake a DA transaction, you are booking it as net gain on fair value change? Yeah, that's right. That's right, uh, Abhijit. 
got it and this will include uh, this will include the income that you would have uh, booked in the interest income between the date of cut off and uh, you know the date of transaction as well got it so so essentially if you do a dea transaction 45 days into the quarter 45 days of interest income gets booked as net gain on fair value changes uh, it, it may be 45 days it may be 25 days depending upon you know where did i uh, pick up the portfolio from which date onwards that's uh, right okay. understood understood and this time around we have reported net gain on fair value changes of 60 crores 42 is coming from uh, this dea transaction that you did another 18 crores is coming from so whatever um, uh, you know cash that we have we pack it into uh, overnight funds with the mutual fund companies and Got we get, uh, uh, you know the income interest income from, from there but so even the mf and treasury income is classified under That's net gain on fair value changes got it uh last question i had is i mean when you would be articulated maybe the yields will go up by 10 20 basis points so so two two parts to this one is i mean on yields do you think there is some regulatory risk uh, not not specifically to you but given how i mean other peers uh, at the interest rates at which they are lending do you think there is a regulatory risk uh, of again some kind of a capping coming in? on on yields or spreads and the other question is uh, specifically on your cost of borrowings uh, i'm seeing ashish i mean sequentially your incremental cost of borrowings have remained stable uh, very heartening to hear that you have added three big lenders uh, during this quarter sbi and amad and city so based on how discussions are progressing i'm hoping you will look to add more with psu bank lending relationships going forward so how should the cost of borrowing kind of trend incrementally as well as on a portfolio basis going forward so i'll answer the cost of borrowing and then uh, i'll hand it over to shalab on the industry uh, view for how the interest rates are likely to move uh, in terms of cost of borrowing yes as we progress uh, we we should we should see some more Uh, improvement in in the marginal cost of borrowings for us but if you overall look at the movement in terms of our uh, cost of borrowing it has been about 130 bps between last year and this year and if i have to look at how uh, the overall interest rates on the repo side has moved it's almost like you know close to about 240 250 basis points so from that respect we been doing well uh, having said that i agree with you. as the participation from the public sector banks improve uh, and the mix changes uh, we should start seeing uh, some benefits on the borrowing side yeah so uh, i'll just supplement what ashish said uh, by design now what was left in our kitty were the public sector enterprises so by design this cost of uh, uh, borrowing or the cost of acquisition should go down you know that's our estimate that's a guess and it's a logical guess now to your uh, first question in terms of the uh, you know uh, on the interest rates and the means that are being charged now specific to us uh, we are currently at a 14% 14.1% name however our gearing is uh, just 2.3 uh, we uh, if our gearing goes to a 4 which it will you know eventually one has to operate at a Three and a half to four four uh, x. Uh, the NIMS should settle anywhere at about twelve twelve uh, you know twelve twelve point five. Add about two percent of credit cost and cost of operations. You know, so you're talking of uh, roughly about four four and a half five percent. So four and a half percent is what we have said that you know uh, we'll kind of uh, we are currently at a seven percent, but I think you know on a uh, Uh, a even basis i think we should settle anywhere you know, on a long term basis at about 5 5 and a half uh, you know percent and add another two uh, to the cost uh, on the credit cost you know you will have a 4 and a half to 5 percent of our roe so your question in terms of uh, you know are do we see any intervention look this is a physical model which is not a very inexpensive model you know one has to physically deploy a lot of people and Uh, for all practical purposes, you know, they have to be monitored. 
uh, which entails a lot of cost and hence a uh, five, five and a half, six percent of, uh, you know, you need that amount to run the company. At a point in time when we, uh, you know, if there is a, uh, if there is a, a question from the anywhere, you know, why regulator, you know, there are others also who ask this question. We have a, we are, a, we have a perfectly valid reason that for unsecured microfinance lending, uh, you know, four, four and a half, five percent is a very much uh, tolerance, uh, is is a very much a doable, uh, uh, you know, levels and limits that we are at. Uh, we also have to ensure uh, that as an industry, we are lend responsibly. And with, when we say lend responsibly, means that the interest rates that we are talking about. And industry, if you see the big players, the top 10 players, if I remember correctly, contribute about 90% of the industry. Most of them are in the median of the number, which is a tolerable number. So, you know, it's a number which is a logical number to operate. Uh, we balance all the, in, the interests of all the stakeholders. So, uh, you know, per se, you know, we have, uh, our, our personal view is that if we continue to operate in this space, we should be fine. However, you know, there are questions, we'll be, uh, you know, happy to answer anybody, you know, outside. But, uh, thank you so much for the elaborate answer. That's all from my side. So, all the very best to you, Shala Mashis and Spani Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, sir, and congratulations for a uh, good set of uh, numbers. Sir, uh, one question on the other loan products. So as part of our Vision 2025, we had also said uh, we'll reach 3,000 crores in other uh, other than MFI. So what's the progress there till now, given that we are six quarters away? Yeah, so uh, we had, and thank you for asking this question, uh, Sarvesh. You know, we have opened 10 branches uh, in Rajasthan. I think we had, last time we had updated that, you know, we are going to expand in Rajasthan. <coughs> this is under our subsidiary Chris Financials. So we opened 10 branches. Uh, we've uh, disbursed about in the loan against property. While we are still finding our feet, but we are progressing really well. We've disbursed about 3.5 crores and done about 105, 106 loans. On the nano MSME loans, uh, we've done. Uh, we just opened uh, opened this up uh, in the in I think about last month of the quarter, last quarter. You know, we've we've done about 25 lakhs and 27 lakh, 27 loans. We have we have 60 uh, people already uh, in the 10 branches that we have uh, that we have spoken about. Uh, all of these are um, people from the industry. Uh, we have, and I think I clarified this last time. These are separate. This is a separate market, separate branch, separate set of people. And even in the head office at the chief business officer level, there's a separate set of uh, individuals, you know, kind of looking at it because this entails setting up a full fledged credit department, like looking into it. This is complete. This has nothing to do with microfinance. So that is why we've demarcated and kept both the two, three, both the models separate. Uh, our plan for, for quarter three is to take the number up to 50 branches uh, by end of this year. I think we should do about roughly 75 uh, crores to 100 crores this quarter. The reason why we, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, by the end of the year. The next year is when we scale up and we'll scale pretty fast. Uh, we are just trying to uh, even out all the uh, rough edges that we have in terms of system because there's a new system that we've taken. This is not the microfinance system, so <laughs> new system, new setup, new environment, new market, new set of people. All of this, we are just socializing ourselves. And once done, uh, uh, towards the later part of quarter four, we kind of, uh, you know, step up uh, to deliver the plans that we've communicated. Understood, sir. And just one one clarification um, on the credit cost uh, part. So if I understand this correctly, this 58 odd, odd crore which has come up, so only 40 to 50 crore which is from assignment transaction is is the sort of the further flow into this sort of a number which can happen as far as our pre-21 book is concerned and, and nothing else is sort of uh, under question as of now. Yeah, so, uh, service, there were two pieces to it. One, you got it right, on the DA part. We do have a 128 crores of uh, unprovided uh, uh, ARC portfolio, which is there, which we are very confident of recovering. So that's there on the balance sheet. 
in case uh, you know in future we are not able to recover we'll have to you know take some uh, bit of uh, cognizance of that and the remaining is the assignment uh, which is 40 to 50 crore it might come yeah, over a period of time that is right. that is right that so is at right. least in one quarter you may not see this sort of a number going forward no 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 no, no. Understood. And in the project perivartan, which might have some impact on your credit cost on this quarter in terms of flows and also 1.3% that we have uh, got is inclusive of that uh, and hence we, we should expect this sort of a number uh, going forward as well or do we think that the real sort of a increase uh, is going to come in the coming quarters from this? So we'll see some flows in this quarter as well. The 1.4, yes, the 1.4 percent is a part of this. However, we are trying our best to kind of ensure that you know it remains within the uh, you know the limits uh, within uh, you know the original limits that we've been delivering over the past few quarters. However, having said that, our overall number that we've been very consistent in what we've been saying, we'll be sub of 2 percent uh, that we are very confident of meeting. Understood, sir. So just one final question on the district concentration. Uh, do we track that and is it in line with uh, what we wanted to achieve? I understood the state-wise guidance. Uh, next year maybe high district concentration. Yes, sir. Here, a slide this number. 20 number pe hai. Yeah, so we, we do uh, all of that, you know, the branch, district, state, uh, zone, all of that we do, but the larger point is, uh, 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 Sarvesh, what one has to, and I would urge and I would draw your attention to is, our top three states are 41-42%. They contribute 41-42% to our overall TT. Even if I draw, uh, even if I go down, if you see, if you, I don't know if you have that slide in front of you, but if you go to the annexure slide 20, my top two states are 15, 15. 15 and 15 and rest every all the states are sub 11 uh, if you go back to the commentary that I said you know we said that exit 25 none of the states will be more than 12 percent so which means two states Odisha and Madhya Pradesh have to come down from the current 15 to 12 percent so this will come out of one increase in denominator and the second is obviously you know the uh, there are certain pockets of inefficiencies which will kind of uh, you know shut the tap on which is going to get us to that number uh, so, you know, the concentration norm is, and uh, the corresponding mitigation is something that we are very, very clear in our uh, in our heads, you know, and that is what we are uh, driving. We are in a, you know, we, I think, you know, I don't think we'll take more than six quarters to kind of get to a 12% across all states. I mean, the highest will be a 12% and the rest will be below. Sure, sir. Uh, congratulations again and wish you all the best. Thank you. Last question. Thank you. Yes, we have one last question. The last question is from the line of Anand Mundra from Soar Wealth. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Congratulations on good set of results. We wanted to check on slide number seven. Your uh, current book percentage has come down, so I couldn't understand this from 97.1 to 96.7. Ah, oh, oh yeah. Uh, so uh, this is. Uh, this is, uh, uh, hi Anand, this is same as uh, what we've been discussing about then. So some of the uh, paid with some delay, so they've been, uh, you know, uh, being classified in that 1 to 30 bucket. And that is why uh, you see the current number has, uh, has uh, you know, gone down from uh, by 40 basis points. See, what I understood from current number and old number is this is a current book and one is a pre-COVID book. That is how the percentage is. Uh. No, 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 no. Current book means no arrears. Zero, zero, oh, uh, zero okay. day delinquency. Okay, okay, okay. Second, sir, I wanted to check how many branches we have moved to VT collection now? How? So, uh, I'll give you a December position. You know, uh, we will, because we offer both operational, non-operational, but there is confusion. Hota hai. So, December, we yeah. have... 1502 branches, I think there is a slide also that we have put up here, which is uh, split into operational and uh, not operational, but if uh, we are already uh, we are already at 1502 branches, of which about 95 odd branches are yet to start operations. Uh, exit December, uh, which is two, two months away, rough and ready about 
370 to 380 uh, branches uh, should be weekly. Uh, yes, all khatam hoga, to uh, you know we should be at about 450. These are all our organic branches. Jo existing monthly ko whatever we are going to transform, all of that will uh, slowly start playing out in quarter four and then quarter one from next year onwards. So, sir, this problem of uh, increase in SMA2 and uh, GNP, that may continue for another three, four quarters so that you are moving everything to weekly branches? No, 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 no. That is not a link. That is a new branch. That is a new branch. That is a weekly model. That is okay. That is straight. Now, we have moved from a one time to a date set from day. From instead of 1st to 10th, we have moved to a... Uh, we have moved to uh, you know Monday to Friday. वो one time 700 branch में move किया था और वहाँ पे रोक दिया हमने अब आगे नहीं कर रहे हम कुछ ये साल. तो ये 700 branches को हमारे को इसको करना है जो which I said will take about three months max four months and then we'll be sorted. The next the other branches 300 branches which are monthly are very big branches so we are not touching them for now. You know once let us do this and at least get and which is why I keep on making that statement that exit 25 or end of FY 25 spandana will be 80 percent weekly not 100. Okay, noted, sir. So, one more thing, uh, how much bad debt recovery happened in this quarter or six months? So, H1, we have recovered 54 crores. Last year, uh, right of recovery was about 23, 24 crores. 39, sorry. 39. Last year. Hmm. H1, we have 54 crores. 54 crores. Or uh, we are targeting uh, upwards of 100 crores, uh, which is another uh, 50 odd crores in the balance. Okay. And okay. Sir, with respect to collection efficiency, uh, since you have moved some branches to weekly, how this has been calculated now, uh, this 97.7 percentage? So, uh, you are cal calculating separately? No, no, no. Anand, this is not the monthly weekly ka koi lena dina nahi hai. Ye net okay. collection efficiency ka definition is very simple. Hai. It was due on the day. Did you collect on the day or not? इतना सिंपल रखते हैं हम ज़्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेट नहीं करते इसमें कोई क्रिएटिविटी यूज़ नहीं की है हमने हम बहुत सिंपल वो हैं ग्रॉस इज जो लैग से आया वो हम यार सो विद रिस्पेक्ट टू नेट कलेक्शन एफिनिटी यू आर सेइंग दैट यू आर टेकिंग डेट वाइज नॉट मंथ वाइज हाँ मतलब वो डेट का एंड में मंथ में ही होगा ना जो कि अलग-अलग दिन पे होता है तो एंड में तो घूम फिर के जब मैं सितंबर रिपोर्ट करूँगा तो चलो मैं उसको और सिंपल कर देता हूँ सितंबर रिपोर्ट करूँगा मैं तो सितंबर में अगर किसी कस्टमर का ड्यू था वो था कि नहीं था वो आया तो आया जाएगा नहीं तो we monitor every day, but obviously from a representation point of view, we have to draw a line somewhere and present to you, no? So, we yes, follow sir, that. Understood. Uh, and sir, this, uh, this uh, gross collection and net collection, the difference being the, difference being the excess, uh, largely would be prepayment. No. So, uh, say for example, if I had 100 due in the month of September, I collected hmm. 90. I am just theoretically saying, I collected 90. That's right, yeah? अब अगले महीने में भी सपोज मैंने सो में से नब्बे लेके आया और ये पिछला वाला दस पूरा का पूरा दस अगले महीने आ गया तो अगले महीने का नेट होगा नब्बे ग्रॉस होगा सौ अंडरस्कूट अंडरस्कूट सर ठीक है आई एम डन सर थैंक्स अलोट थैंक यू वेरी मच दैट वाज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन इन क्यू I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much uh, for being on the call. Uh, we, uh, we uh, you know, are very thankful for giving us uh, the support during the quarters. Uh, we will continue to deliver as a management, you know, we continue to uh, work on the Vision 25 plan that we had articulated. As uh, highlighted in my commentary earlier, we've started working on the vision uh, 25 to 28, which we will be able to share with you when uh, closer to the end of the year. So thank you for all your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Spandana Spurti Financial Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.